Hey Snow Tracks YouTubers, welcome to another insightful walk around on a brand new 2023 snowmobile, the Polaris Indy Matrix SP650. Had to look on the side there just to read that back to you. There's so many different handles attached to this. One handle that isn't attached to this is that it's a 137. Uh, Polaris is on kind of a I don't know what it is, they're kind of flying out there on their own and they don't think that it's necessary to put the track length on snowmobiles. So for whatever reason, it's a 137 and it doesn't say that. So I want to help you understand where this snowmobile is positioned in the Polaris uh, product lineup for 2023. This would definitely be called your in-season, in-stock at the dealer snowmobile. Unfortunately, there's hardly any left at dealers. But that's what it was built for. It comes in one color, not with all the myriad color variations you can get from uh, Polaris. And here's, here's the deal. It's only available as a 650 with the new 650 uh, Patriot motor. And it's only available, as I said, as a 137. And it comes with these Polaris IFP aluminum body floating piston shocks at all four corners. So that's what you get for suspension now you could upgrade of course you could upgrade anything you want you could upgrade it and put qs3s on it that's what an xc has so the difference between this uh, sp and an xc is really essentially the shocks the uh, the xc comes with the same uh, pid uh, display doesn't come with an s7 unless you ordered it that way this comes standard with a pid which is the basic that's the, the uh, screen that comes if you don't get an S7. I just want to, uh, while we're here, I'll get Graham to just keep this in focus here. Uh, I want to talk to you about the smart grips. This has the smart warmers or smart grips on it, which keep the, the temperature at a preset level in actual degrees, and you set it here. I just want to say this about that. <laughs> it's really not easy to do with this PID display. It is like falling down easy with the uh, S7. So you can do it. You can set it up for uh, three positions, three preset temperatures for the grips and the uh, thumb, uh, thumb throttle. And it will stay at those temperatures, irregardless of how fast or slow you're going, how much alt alternator output, it'll stay at those preset temperatures. So it's a pretty cool setup. Okay, so while we're at the handlebars here, we're gonna uh, talk about storage. Polaris was the first of the OEs to respond to our oh myriad complaints about no storage on the newer snowmobiles get and the better they get the less storage they have check this out this is cavernous look down in here there are actually people walking around down there it's so big you can put in like five cheeseburgers whatever you want you can take an illegal alien across the border in there if necessary that's standard on all matrix and the seat comes off with this proprietary fastener and there's another eight liters of storage right under the seat and the seat just snaps back on and away you go, Bob's your uncle. So uh, storage is more than covered. And of course, you've got your options on the back with Polaris uh, proprietary, uh, well, I'll say it's proprietary, like the link system. That's what it's, it's patterned after. And you can get all manner of accessories and you put the, uh, the attachment uh, little dealy bobs you put them on the tunnel and then you can put on all manner of different accessories. It's a good setup. This sled has what I consider to be more than adequate storage. There is, th th that's not an issue. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to gripe about it. They've got it fixed. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the upfront area of the sled. Uh, first of all, this is Polaris's proprietary race-inspired IFS. Uh, it has zero bump steer, which is really important when you're in gnarly terrain and it's twisty and turny and you're floating through corners, you do not want bump steer. Bump steer makes the sled shake its head, throw you around, you feel like Gumby on the seat because it's not tracking parallel as the skis and the front suspension go through their movement. The skis are towing in and towing out. This is a zero bump steer setup. And frankly, uh, there's no other way to, to put it. It's the best IFS in the business. It's the best handling sled in the business. There's some that come really close but Polaris continues to occupy that space. Okay, so we've got tons of storage. We've got nice looking body work. We've got a lot of neat features. The big question is, how is it to get under the hood? I'm not gonna take the panels off because I gotta put them back on and it'll just bore you. But I wanna tell you that this panel here is your panel for oil. 
That panel over there rarely comes off. This one here rarely, rarely comes off in the middle. You can take them both off and put them, or all three off and put all three back on in about a minute and a half. When, when, you're, when you own one and you practice it and you know what you're doing, it's easy to do. The 650 is shoehorned in there, fits like a glove, it's super happy. You need to understand that the 650 Patriot motor is a, a, a true variant of the 850 Patriot. What I mean is, is that dimensionally on the outside of the engine, they're identical. There's really no difference in weight. It's arguably one pound, okay, lighter the 650. So there is really no difference there. The, both motors use Polaris's new proprietary engine mounts, which control vibration like crazy. I'll demo that for you when I start it up, but it doesn't use a torque stop. And so you're not getting engine to chassis, direct engine to chassis vibration. Works really good. Um, all the adjustability you got up front is preload on the IFS shocks and that's it. I wouldn't mess around with that too much. I'd focus my attention on the rear skid if I was gonna go do some tuning. So let's move back and talk about the Pro CC. All right, this is a conventionally coupled, that's what CC stands for, kind of a weird acronym uh, to mean conventionally coupled, but it is, and it's coupled at the back. I'm just gonna point to it right here. Your bump stops or your, your, your uh, uh, coupling blocks are back and forward and the drop link moves in between them back and forth. It's, a, it's got a lot of uncoupled movement, this skid does. What I mean is there's a lot of uh, plushness before it couples up and brings both swing arms into play. Now, pay close attention because we need to understand this if you want to understand what's going on here. This is a long front torque arm design. Here's where the power enters the chassis. That's the front torque arm mount. The front torque arm mount on the rails you can see it right there. So that's a long, long front torque arm. Uh, very, very reminiscent of what Skidoo's been using to make the arm motion work so good. That is a black art, and there's no question that a long front torque arm design is the way to go in today's world with snowmobiles. Okay, um, this is a five-piece tunnel. Let me see if I can count them. One, two, three, four, five. It's a five-piece tunnel. It's got strip heat exchangers, uh, strip coolers that uh, are here and here. They're an integral part of the top of the tunnel, the cooler. This gets warm on here. You can uh, use it if you're running in minimal snow and the hot light comes on, you can pile snow on here and it'll directly cool the, uh, the uh, engine down. It'll transfer to the coolers and shoot cold antifreeze up into the uh, bulkhead. The bulkhead has a cooler as well, a big one. So this is a good cooling system. These things don't, uh, don't overheat unless you're running them down a paved highway in July, which they don't recommend you do that, strangely enough. Okay, what do you got for a track? You've got a Ripsaw 137, uh, 125 lug, 15 wide. Nothing too romantic there. It's a pretty uh, serviceable, pretty sturdy, well thought of track, but it's not an ice ripper and you can't get an ice ripper on this one yet. If it was an XC, you would order it and you could get an ice ripper. So there's where you're at. It's a 137 rail, right? Uh, the tunnel's longer than a 129. It's a 137 tunnel. Um, you've got uh, snap blocks for your torsion spring preload and you've got a uh, coilover shock front arm uh, IFP gasser up there. So uh, it's Pretty, uh, it's, it's not fancy, but it works really good. I can tell you, I've put most of the 500 uh, miles on this sled myself. It rides great and it handles even better. It's, it's just a pleasure to navigate trails, especially when you get in the twisties. These things, you just almost think them around. You just kind of tilt your head one way, tilt your head the other way, and away you go. That is the standard windshield, believe it or not, and it's actually credible. Uh, I rode it on a couple of snowy, cold days and the windshield works great. It's, uh, there's a, a bigger one yet, and up to you. It kind of spoils the looks of the sled. This, I think, is a good compromise in between. So, uh, okay, what do we got? We've got a Polaris P85 primary clutch on the 650, and we've got a team secondary. 
that runs into a chain case on that side with a brake, a hydraulic disc brake on the right side on the jack shaft. Let me repeat that. This is not a drive axle brake. This is a jack shaft brake. There's uh, a lot of goodness in that and Polaris is sticking with it because their brake performance is pretty much legendary. Um, it is hard to beat the way this brakes. This thing has deep, deep modulation when you're going fast at the center of a corner. You won't lock the track unless you want to lock the track, okay? It's, it's got great modulation because the jack shaft is spinning faster than a drive axle would. And so it also makes uh, one of the coolest noises in all of snowmobiling. The brake on all Matrix has this kind of a whizzing, whirring sound when you put it on. And I mean, you know, a lot of people would say you're nuts if you said you like that, so I'm nuts. But I really like the way the brake sounds. It, it brings a real tangible feel uh, to your to your modulation because you can tell by the sound uh, how much braking you're giving it. Obviously your hand is going to tell you that as well. Okay, um, handlebars come with this riser and this riser only. It's about two, <coughs> it's about two and a quarter inches I believe. Um, you can buy and add a higher or lower riser from Polaris if you wish. Let me uh, start it because I know you all want to hear it run. Um, Polaris has done something this year to their electric starter. Their electric starter is a remote uh, located starter motor with a cable, a flex cable that goes to a Bendix on the block of the motor and engages with the inside sheave on the uh, primary clutch. Um, in the past, that starter has sounded when you operate it like 18 ball bearings in a, in a galvanized garbage can, just like a terrible mechanical noise. I think they must have listened to us because this one sounds the best of any I've heard so far, including what was in the Axis. So it's been a long time that they've sounded weird. So I'm going to fire it up for you. Kill switch up. Ignition key is how you start it. There you go. See, it didn't start. Okay, check out the vibration. There is almost zero vibration. Look at the ski tips. The windshield's got a little bit at the extremity here, but it's not making any uh, ridiculous noises and vibration-y kind of noises. It's nice and quiet. It just gives, doggone it. Engages at about 30, 3,500 RPM. That is, a, that is a thing of beauty to have a motor that big, that powerful. So let's talk a little bit more about the Liberty. Because it is a family motor, um, its horsepower is pretty formidable for only a 50cc, arguably 50cc increase over uh, a 600. So Polaris has given percentages and wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Let's just skip all that stuff and we'll tell you, we think it's about 137 horsepower, maybe as high as 140, but in a head-to-head -head drag down the lake, um, the old Liberty 800 and this are ski to ski. This thing will, will sometimes outrun it, not always, but it'll run with it. So there's very uh, nice delineation between, if you buy the 850, I mean, you're at 165 horse, Polaris even kind of, well, I don't know whether they would acknowledge that, but we have. Uh, it's 165 horse. It will pull this, but this is right there with the 850, and it is, uh, it, it's, it's close. It won't beat an 850. Obviously, it shouldn't, but it will certainly on occasion beat the old 800. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty stout motor. It's a, a EFI, two throttle bodies. It's got three-stage exhaust valves, very sophisticated valve, uh, exhaust valve system works like a charm um, that's pretty much all i can tell you it's good on fuel one of the things that stood out right away with this if you're thinking about well should i buy an 850 or 650 um, honestly the performance difference is marginal but the fuel economy difference is measurable there's definitely advantages in fuel economy with this motor and if you have the old polaris 600 whoa <laughs> there's a big difference in fuel economy. I think it's almost 20%, 15 for sure over the old 600 Liberty. So uh, 
this motor is smooth, refined, quiet, really strong. When it engages and pulls away, it really pulls hard. It likes to shift up hard. So when you get, up on the, get out on the lake and you take off, you know, you'll be running 65 to 70 miles an hour and the tack will swing right back and settle down until you dip into the throttle again and bring the RPM up. It, it, it pulls a big upshift. It's clutched with what I would consider to be pretty heavy weights. So it does shift up hard and uh, that contributes obviously to the fuel economy. Okay, what else can we talk about? Uh, sitting on the gas tank, there's no hiding it. This does not have a pyramidal frame. <laughs> Polaris never got caught in that problem. This has uh, a high arching uh, handlebar pull mount. Uh, there's a lot of aluminum in this sled. Okay, this is really cool. Dry weight estimated, whatever that means by Polaris, is 509 pounds, which is pretty impressive. It's, it's a pretty light snowmobile for a 650. Um, all the way around the sled, the, uh, the details we've covered. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot more I can talk about uh, in this walk around other than this uh, comes standard with electric start, which is kind of strange because it's the, it's the low dollar. This is the cheapest 650 you can get. It comes only, as I said, with a 137 and it comes only with electric start. All snowmobiles should have electric start. I mean, come on, you know, can you imagine starting a 130 horsepower outboard with a rope? Not likely. So uh, there you go. That's, uh, that's what we got here. The Polaris Indy Matrix SP650 2023 model. And uh, that's as good a description as I can give you for this time. And would you please like us and subscribe at the bottom of the screen? We'd appreciate that. And stay tuned because we'll have more insightful walk-arounds as our press units for this coming season continue to arrive. Thanks for your time. <laughs>